Hello there. Um, this is a picture of an imperial cutter. I've got a cutter. I'm really proud of it. <laughs> I can't fly it very well. I like it a lot. I do not have a red paint job on it, but this this cutter's in Super Cruise, which is uh, where you spend a lot of time, really, isn't it? Um, yeah, you can tell it's Super Cruise because of the lines and uh, the fact that you don't see any light coming out the thrusters because of course this is a different method of travelling forwards. It's just magically compressing the space in front and popping it round the back and expanding it at the back to punt itself forward. You, you can't go up to, to light speed without using your frameshift drive in any way. So you've got to use your frameshift drive and this is Super Cruise it enables you to go faster than light. So you've got the numbers change in the bottom uh, of your display so you, you you get c which is light the speed of light or you get mm which is megameters so that's a million meters a second which is quite fast i guess <laughs> it's faster than i can run yeah if you get near a planet that'll go down because you'll get locked against the gravity so you'll slow down you can only go 2001 times the speed of light which is rather sweet before you need to get any faster than that, you've got to go into hyperspace and jump to another system. That's the fastest speed you can go within a system. And obviously you can't leave a system in Super Cruise because of the fact that it's just a game and it needs to load the next system. <laughs> but that's all good, we don't mind that really. Anyway, yeah, I was gonna talk about a cutter and I've ended up talking about the speed of light. Yeah, it's uh, it's a good ship. You can put the kitchen sink on. It's huge. It's huge. In theory, it's it's really good at most stuff. I use my cutter for exploration, and although lots of people poo poo this, you can get quite a, a high jump range on a uh, on a cutter. But yeah, mine mine's got quite a high jump range. I I, I have a, a Guardian frameshift drive booster on it, which makes it go uh, a little bit further, <laughs> which is good. I enjoyed the fact when I was traveling in my cutter that I could take all the SRVs, I could take all the scanning materials, the limpet collectors, the, the limpet repair, all the different things I might want. I could have two AFMUs to repair my ship as I went along. I could do anything I wanted because it had such a lot of internal compartments. I liked that about it. It's, it's, it's luxurious. And it looks good as well when you're taking a photo, which is a lot of the time you, you want to, you know, record yourself as having visited this wonderful planet so many thousands of light years away. You want to make sure that uh, you show your ship there in front of the orange planet you found or whatever. Quite like the Imperial ships, they're all curvy. I like the, the, the brutish clarity of the lines and angles in the federal ships but the curvy imperial things are nice to draw as well because I'm, I'm not always that accurate drawing straight lines whereas curves you get away with a bit more <laughs> and I like that I, I like the, uh, the the sheen as well because the sheen will change across the surface of a curve in the way that it doesn't on a on a flat plane a flat surface so and um, this is this is clearly originally the uh, the photograph I was sent had clearly been slightly lightened because I think you can see dust in the um, the systems and you can't always see the dust. Sometimes you're going to need to brighten the photo really because space is dark and you want to you want to pick out the glory of if you've gone to the veil or something that's got those amazing purples and blues and you want to see it you want to make it worth your while taking those photos if all you can see is dark i mean in your darkened room with your glowing monitor you might see it really well but when you take your photos home and have them done do <laughs> you want to be able to see them well so i uh, yeah lots of people who take photos uh will lighten them just a little bit and perhaps up the up the saturation a tiny bit or a lot depending on what you wanted to do but it's easy with chalk because you just use a brighter color <laughs> <laughs> so I'd shown the uh, the dust clouds in this because it gives some interest to the background uh, and amongst the stars. I got the lines, super cruise lines, the angles are wrong, <laughs> but I don't really care. It's not that bad. I, I enjoyed doing the, the slight prism effect of the, uh, the lines though. The, the, there's a little bit of a rainbow going on in some of the lines and I, I, I quite enjoyed doing that bit. That was a bit, a bit different to give it a little bit of a bit of interest in what would otherwise just be a line. <laughs> Gosh, I'm so sorry. This is 
doll. You're really patient. Um, yeah, it's just basically me colouring in. The red, I wanted it super, super red because it is a super, super bright, vibrant red paint job. So I ended up sticking a bit of red paint on and then putting more red chalk on top just to give it that welly because I think putting chalk on top of black paper, you kind of get that that black isn't always quite eradicated, even if you paste the chalk on dead thick. So I thought I'll give it a base to, to give it an extra luminance to get that effect a little bit better. It's worth a go. And it's so difficult trying to get things neat and tidy with chalk. So I always end up using pencil crayons and I've just I've just passed the point of feeling guilty about it. I like using pencil crayons to, to do lines. I'm not I'm not gonna beat myself with a kipper about it. I'm just gonna I, make the picture how I want. <laughs> I just don't really care. I did sort of tell myself at one point I was gonna try and, you know, use use paint for one or use pencil just for one. And and you can, but I think, you know, it's more fun if you throw everything at it, isn't it? I was gonna say, yeah, if you're in Super Cruise you can get you can get dragged out as well, which is is quite fun. You can't get dragged out of hyperspace by anything human operated. Uh, you can get dragged out of Super Cruise if someone gets behind you, you know if it's a human they've got an em empty square as a symbol on their scanner and if the square is solid it's an NPC but I find if it's an NPC you can pretty much always evade that I'm not good at evading humans <laughs> uh, they get behind you and then they can they can trigger their frame shift drive interdictor which is uh, basically throws off your frame shift which is you're using to travel fast and and, and and then you go into a spin and if you can untether yourself from their weapon lock of it as it were then then you can get away but it's quite difficult to do it in something like a cutter because a cutter has got such a big mass they've got they've got quite quite an easy job of finding it and locking it because you can't miss it it's the size of a barn something like a little a little viper you can nip off with very easily but cutter if it's a player you'd be better off just pulling yourself out and then setting course for another system and just leaving the whole area as quick as you can anyway uh i will stop going on at you thank you for listening and watching and whatever <laughs> cheers <laughs>